So in this video, I want to talk about what it took to get this particular uh, AVR programmer working with AVR Dude. So there was a lot of options here. Uh, I'm specifically looking to upgrade firmware on, on one particular board, and that's the uh, Retro Chip Tester Professional. But th this should apply to anybody trying to get uh, an AVR ISP Mark II working with AVR Dude. So this was the programmer I, I you know, chose on uh, Amazon. It came with some extra cables and things. There were cheaper versions, but I've dealt with WaveShare stuff before, and I felt like this is probably going to be a pretty good choice for me. So the, got the programmer. It was delivered yesterday, and I sat down and started trying to figure out how to actually get driver set up for it. So I went to the WaveShare site, and I found the programmer, and it went awesome. And there was a link on here to get me to software. And I got to this page here for software, and basically the way this program was advertised, actually I think it's on the IS, the, the WaveShare site, is they really talk about it being uh, compatible with the uh, AppMail development software, not really meant for anything else. I mean, if, if, if you read through this, that, that, that's kind of, you, you know, what they say. Uh, you know, it works with AVR Studio 6. And but I was determined to get it to work with AVR Dude. So because this led me over to AppMel, etc., I got to that site uh, where this link went, and really I couldn't find anything that was useful. Then I started Googling, and I found this thread here that basically said you can directly download the drivers only by looking for this file at this link and so I went ahead and downloaded that file went to the link and if you scroll down quite a few pages here you will find it and I again I'm not seeing it if I scrolled past it I must have it doesn't jump out as the thing there it is so this right here provided that 70888 download and I went ahead and downloaded it yesterday and I installed it and there's a uh, software package that gets installed. It shows up in Device Manager. It's like Django or Django or something. And, and it's one of the devices that gets installed in that category inside of uh, Device Manager here. But I could never get AVR Dude to see it. And I played and played and played, and it just didn't appear to be exposed in something that AVR Dude could recognize. So I went ahead and uninstalled all those drivers and I started over. And so let's jump in at that point. So I'm going to connect the programmer here. As it was the first time I installed it. And that is, it connects, it finds it, but there's no drivers installed. It just, it, it, you know, it's something foreign. It doesn't really know what it is. And the question becomes, how do I get drivers on here that AVR dude can deal with? And that led to more Googling which got me to this article and and you know read through this and it basically said you can use a dig to change the essentially the driver to, to change well the driver to change the driver to something that should work with AVR dude uh, I've dealt with the dig before so I went okay I can do this so uh, let me bring up device manager again let me bring up the Explorer. So I've downloaded Zadig. It's sitting right here. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I'm going to pronounce it Zadig. Uh, it, it's a straight executable. There's no installer. I'm going to run it. It's going to ask for permissions to be run because it runs elevated. It has gone out, looked at Device Manager, and said, you have a device without a driver installed right here so let's go ahead and and get a driver in place for it and according to the article that we were looking at we should change it to libusb-132 and so i'm going to go ahead and do this it takes a minute or so uh, apologies for the noise if it's coming in from outside uh, let's go ahead and install the driver i've clicked it once be patient it takes a little bit of time to react there it goes, it's installing the driver. What we should see over here is this other device's entry should vanish, which it just did. We then see Atmel USB devices show up, 
and there's the AVR ISP. Be patient and let this continue to run. running. So what I saw from AVR Dude before was the error message said basically I can't find your USB device uh, and no matter what I did with the uh, other drivers loaded I could never find the USB device. So it's happy with this. It thinks it's done. Let's go ahead and close this and I'll close this out as well. Uh, and no matter what I did, like I say, AVR Dude didn't recognize the device. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the command line for AVR Dude. If I bring up this right here, so the software I'm trying to, the firmware I'm trying to update is, like I said, specific to my retro chip tester professional. Uh, it, you can download the firmware. I could download the firmware because I'm a registered owner. Uh, downloaded it. I've unzipped it, and in there is this batch file named Flash Firmware. Please edit dot bat. And his original command line is right here. So what this larger block does, if you're not familiar with Windows batch files, is the for statement will say for every, in this case, file that matches this string. So this is basically any file named chiptester pro fw v0. Dot, any character, any character dot hex, execute what's inside of the parentheses. Uh, and percent percent %f becomes the variable that will contain that name. So if there was multiple names in this folder that match this, it would walk through each one of them as the for loop ran. There's only one in the folder, so it only runs once. So this is the original command line, then said if exists that file, if basically I can see the file, I can get a hold of it. Go ahead and run avrdo.exe, and the rest of this should be somewhat familiar. I'm going to use this configuration file, uh, my device is an AT Mega 2560. My programmer is an STK 500. It is installed. I mean, for the dash B, it's installed on COM5. What I want you to do, which is what the dash U is, is I want you to flash it. I don't know exactly what these all say, but flash, write, and basically the, the file name gets put in right there to go ahead and flash it. So because I'm not using a serial programmer, I purchased a USB programmer. I had to modify the command line to look like this line down here. And it's very similar. If, if we find the file, you know, the hex file to be programmed, run AVR dude, same configuration file, same AT Mega 2560, you know, it's the same target device. But in this case, the programmer is an AVR ISP Mark II. This is one of the legitimate programmers. We tell it to expect to find it out there as a USB device someplace. This dash B05 is from a comment up here that makes it actually program much faster. This seems to program my device just fine. Uh, if you ran into issues, if you were adding this switch in, just remove it. It'll program slower but work. And then the same thing, I want you to basically flash that firmware to the device. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to unplug the programmer completely. It's unplugged. I'm going to go ahead and run that batch file. And this is the error message I was originally getting before uh, I ins you, you know, installed or, or modified the driver. USB dev open, did not find any USB device USB. This is what I chased forever when I was on that original Atmel driver. Uh, you plug the device back in. You should hear it get recognized, hopefully. There it is. We saw it show up here. Now if we go ahead and run the command line, we get a completely different output. And this is the output that told me, yes, you found, you know, AVR dude has found the USB device and can talk to it. And a bunch of handshaking information got passed back and forth here. And then it come back and said, but the target's not detected. It couldn't find the device to actually be programmed. So I'm going to go ahead, you can't see this, but I'm going to set my mark or my uh, retro chip tester professional down on the desk, desk here. I'm going to take the programmer and I'm going to connect the ISP header to the ISP pins on it. And make sure they're connected correctly, which they are. And then I need to apply power, in this case, to my programmer, or, or to my 
power is applied to the program. I need to apply power to the target board, which I'm doing now. The connect LED on the programmer turned green, so it should be communicating with the target board. In this case, if we run the command again, we should see it flash firmware, and there it goes. So the programmer shows busy. It's got a green flashing LED to basically say, hey, I'm doing something. It's written the firmware. It's validating the firmware. Now, I'm writing the same firmware over the top, same version over the top of what's already on the board. So this, again, gets back around to the state says, hey, I'm happy and I worked. However, I ran it with this switch that says program much faster. It may be that, you, that this will need to be removed if you know if the AVR device was blank or had a different firmware in it. So you know, keep in mind you may need to remove this if you go down this path. Uh, but hopefully, this recaps everything you need to know. Uh, I went ahead and bought this programmer uh, simply because it came with cables. Uh, that looked useful to me. Uh, there is some software on on this, you know, the mini CD. I can't read it. I don't have a reader. Who has a you know a CD reader anymore? Uh, I've got no way to read that CD. That led me down the path on the WaveShare site to drivers that would work for Atmel Studio, but not for uh, AVR Dude, which led me to. This search, actually this search is how I got to that AVR download. So none of this actually worked for me. Turn it into Google search, and specifically the search was how to use, you know, came back with how to use the AVR ISP Mark II with AVR Dude and Great Cal Basic. Don't care about the Great Cal Basic. I just wanted to get it working, and that then become the Zadig utility, which I've downloaded from the site. I have antivirus software on my machine. I've downloaded this before. I've never had it complain. So hopefully it's a safe download. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, you know, it's under the GNU General Public License. It just kind of lives here. Uh, it seems safe. We ran it. You know, we saw the device here. You know, showing up as another device, no driver installed. We went ahead and ran the Zadig software, which came back and basically said, hey, there's an unrecognized device. I changed its driver to be LibUSB. Actually, we can go through here and do that whole step again. Why not? Let's go ahead and uninstall this device. And I want to delete the driver software associated with it. Let me unplug and turn a couple of things off here. I'm going to pull the USB cable out of the programmer and I'm going to plug it back in. We should see another device show up here with, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, a little hint here, this has helped me a few times. If you're not seeing a device show up that is plugged in, you may need to go in and view and do show hidden devices. You can see I've got two new devices that showed up here that because the device isn't connected, on the USB chain, it didn't show it to me. Uh, I've used that a couple times to actually find things that seem to be hiding. Anyhow, we've got, uh, you know, it said, hey, there's a USB device with this name. I don't know what to do with it. I'll give it permission to run and elevate it. I'm going to go ahead and change, in this case, to libusb132. Uh, be patient here. I have clicked it. There it goes. I've done this a whole bunch of times, what you're seeing demoed here. Uninstalled and reinstalled the driver uh, to try to understand exactly you know what the steps are that need to be done here. We've seen it go away as an unknown device and show up under Atmel USB devices as an AVR ISP Mark II. And if you recall, all the way back here, this is an ASR ISP Mark II compatible programmer uh, supporting AVR Studio 4, 5, 6, and 7 or higher. In this case, I'm not using AVR Studio, which is gets down to the reason we're actually doing this whole fun little mess here. Uh, we successfully installed. 
get back to device manager we see it sitting there back to that command shell because we can jump back into the editor so this is a complete recap I guess this command line targeting that programmer name on the USB uh, is a USB device got us working in this case it's going to fail saying it can't find the target board which is what it did but it did talk with the programmer so there's a recap of everything we've done here hopefully this was useful to somebody uh, it took me quite a while yesterday to get this figured out uh, I will post the appropriate URLs here in the in the, the video description uh, just to help you find this stuff uh, like I said I hope this is useful and we'll talk soon